close friends with cancer or have experienced cancers? Put up your hands. What about diabetes? How about infertility? Family or close friends? Now I want those of you who put your hand up at least once to put it up again for any of those questions and look around you. Today, every third person develops cancer. Who will it be? The World Health Organization empfiehlt the Impfung gegen Masern, Röteln, Polio, Hepatitis B, Pneumokokken, gegen Rotavirus. Wir sprechen von Impfschäden wie Autismus, Diabetes, Asthma, Multiple Sklerose, Epilepsie, Narkolepsie. Der WHO sollten Kinder nicht mehr als sechs Teelöffel Zucker pro Tag konsumieren. WHO-Empfehlungen beeinflussen Regierungen auf der ganzen Welt. Es gibt ein Menschenrecht auf Gesundheit. Because if we want to protect Americans from Ebola here at home, we have to end it over there. H1N1, SARS, MERS. Dann geht alles rasend schnell. Das Virus lässt Millionen Menschen rund um den Globus fiebern. The WHO declared an international emergency. The Universal health coverage is the single most powerful concept that public health has to offer. We will not let the people down. Die Weltgesundheitsorganisation, kurz WHO, hat ihren Hauptsitz in Genf. Hier bestimmen sie die weltweit gültigen Normen für die Medizin. Doch die Sonderorganisation der Vereinten Nationen mit weltweit rund 7000 Mitarbeitern offenbart gerade bei Kriseninterventionen immer wieder eklatante Schwächen. But after Fukushima, I think you can see that everyone knows that there's a a kind of official and high-level cover-up, and the WHO is involved in it. The WHO has been criticized for reacting too slowly to the outbreak. Do you think any of that criticism is fair? They don't have the money, they don't have the capacity, they don't have the leadership, they don't have the courage to say, let's go. I'm a filmmaker. I have a daughter. It is important to me that she finds the world in good condition. That is why I'm traveling to the WHO headquarters in Geneva. The American journalist Robert Parsons lives here. For 20 years now, he's been writing about the WHO. Until a few years ago, every Monday, the opening day of the World Health Assembly, there was a sumptuous reception at the WHO given by the Director General. That was the great centerpiece where everybody met and talked. And uh, it, was, it was a very good situation for pulling everybody together in an informal setting. Now, more than ever, it has, that sort of thing has been replaced by private reception, and they are organized by industry. I'm, I'm particularly pleased to have uh, uh, two ministers of health. And industry spends a lot of money. For them, it's just part of the cost of doing business. 
it's a way of making direct contact with the people who back in their home countries are making the decisions to formulate and implement public health policy. It's extraordinarily expensive. You can imagine it if you've got a thousand people and you have a hundred francs a person, it's a hundred thousand francs right there at least, just to feed people who are already overfed. There's no limit on the champagne or the wine, and it's always very good wine. Straight through, if you can't, no, you can't. What a promising start. But originally, it must have been about more. The suffering of millions of human beings in scores of countries will be alleviated, and many, many thousands of lives will be saved. Die Weltgesundheitsorganisation zählt bei ihrer Gründung 61 Mitgliedstaaten und finanziert sich aus deren Beiträgen. Who has positively changed everything? Smallpox was completely eradicated, which was the first time ever that a disease was wiped out. The world out. saves each year 1,000 million dollars on vaccines and care of the sick alone. According to Robert Parsons, the WHO is infiltrated by the industry from the very start. Here. This one's in English. This was in the San Francisco Examiner. Anyway, WHO was not happy with my coverage because it made them look less than good. Ever since the 1950s, studies have shown that smoking damages the health. But for decades, the WHO does little to oppose the tobacco industry. does your job call you out of bed in the middle of the night? Well, if you were a doctor, it would be often. And generally, there isn't much time to spare. Coffee, doctor? Oh, fine. Have a camel with your coffee. Thanks. You know, this night work's kind of rough, isn't it? That's right. But a camel's always a pleasure. The majority of politicians take no action against tobacco advertising for decades. Ganz egal, was man von Tabakwerbung hält oder nicht, das geht Brüssel nichts an. Nothing is done to check the profits of the tobacco industry until charges are brought against it by its victims and by the USA. As late as 1994, heads of the tobacco industry testify before the American Congress. Do you believe nicotine is not addictive? I believe nicotine is not addictive. I believe that nicotine is not addictive. I believe that nicotine is not addictive. The real issue is, should cigarettes be outlawed? Gradually, the tobacco companies are obliged to publish their internal documents. These general requests are getting very broad. Can we not discuss what no, I'm not, really wants? No, that's not broad at all, Mr. Campbell. Will you provide that information to the committee? We're extremely concerned about competitive activity in, in view of the fact that we yes gave you... Yes or no, Mr. Campbell? I will do my best, yes. Their strategies to combat the WHO are made public. One example is the Boca Raton Action Plan from the year 1988. Senior figures at Philip Morris met in Florida and drew up a number of sophisticated strategies to limit the power of the WHO. The first and most important aim this organization has extraordinary influence on government and consumers, and we must find a way to defuse this. The WHO gets under pressure. Donc on va faire une petite recherche euh, dans notre base de données. The evidence show that tobacco companies had operated for many years with, with the deliberate purpose of subverting the efforts of WHO to control tobacco. Les inlassables efforts de Monsieur Zeltner ont fait de lui un adversaire de choix des multinationales du tabac. Ils lui ont même valu le sobriquet. The Tobacco Taliban, le Taliban du tabac.
Ja, na. Also, sehen Sie, das, sind, das war ein, so ein der Artikel. Damals eine ganz große Geschichte und hat tatsächlich äh, die Welt verändert. Sie haben so Institute gegründet oder aber Wissenschaftler gekauft, äh, ihre Position zu vertreten. Und so haben sie dann versucht, äh, nicht mit ihrem Namen aufzutreten, sondern mit Organisationen, von denen man gar nicht angenommen hat, dass das Vertreter der Tabakindustrie sind. One of these institutes is led by the American lawyer Paul Dietrich. Philip Morris finances it with $240,000 a year. At the same time, Dietrich is a consultant for the WHO regional office in America. When his double role becomes known, Dietrich moves into the finance industry. And we bought back our own bonds. That money never went back into the economy. He won't agree to talk to me. In the WHO report on the strategies of the tobacco industry, six other consultants are mentioned. The British toxicologist Frank Sullivan, for instance, claims that passive smoking doesn't harm your health. His study on the subject is financed by Philip Morris. Hello, Frank Sullivan. Hello, Mr. Sullivan. Oh, hello. <laughs> Good to hear you. I tell you why I'm calling you. I came across the tobacco scandal at WHO, and there your name is mentioned. My name? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Were well, you a WHO consultant? Yes, I'm a yeah, yeah. I am. I I am a consultant for WHO, and I also used to be a consultant in the tobacco industry. It was a great long form you had to fill in every time I went to a meeting at WHO. But did you declare in these forms that you also consulted tobacco industry? Yes, yes, yes. And it was no problem for WHO? No, 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 because <laughs> um, it, it wasn't <clears throat> it wasn't a big issue. From when till when were you a WHO consultant? Oh, I've, I, oh God, I don't know when. I... Did you stop after the tobacco scandal or not? No, 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 no. In the year 2000, Sullivan's collaboration with the tobacco industry becomes public, but he still continues to advise the WHO. I meet with two department leaders combating tobacco under the auspices of the WHO. We have a zero tolerance approach. As I said, the director general says, the tobacco industry is our number one enemy, and we wear that badge very proudly. Is Frank Sullivan still a WHO consultant? Absolutely not. I mean, we have, a, we have, they, they can't because the names of all those persons are well known uh, through the documents. But, but did now Frank they're... Sullivan consult to WHO, for example, in 2002, let's say? Not, to the, not that I'm aware of as well, too. And again, the policies that are in place now is that all consultants, no matter whether they're working in tobacco control or infectious diseases or anywhere in the organization, have to sign a declaration of interest. But this means a lot of trust. Don't you think that they should be reviewed? Uh, trust, uh, I think that uh, you should trust until such a day you, you lack trust. You cannot just start by already being suspicious about uh, people and, and their capacity to, to do things. That's good. Okay. Thank, Thank you so you much. I'm sorry. We are not alone during the conversation. Three WHO staff are watching us and the press spokesman conducts the person I'm interviewing with silent gestures. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to know about conflict of interest forms, and I would like to see uh, the conflict of interest forms of Frank Sullivan. I just be able to refer the question onto the necessary yes. people, because that, that yeah. might be within the archive of the okay. organization. Yeah. But as a role of the reference librarian, yeah. that's what we do. My official inquiry about Frank Sullivan's conflict of interest form is a dead end, despite countless phone calls.
the WHO and also uh, Thomas Zeltner, uh, they always say, okay, we had a problem and there were single persons who were corrupt. This was the Sullivan, Paul Dietrich yeah. and so on. But I'm always doubting, I mean, was it really single persons and now it's over? Or could you say that entire segments of WHO are corrupt? We have all the tobacco company documents which show how major corporations operate. And the pharmaceutical companies or the chemical companies do not operate any differently. Their obligation to their shareholders completely overwhelms any consideration of public health. So these are the people that are involved in the H1N1 push. Do I know enough now? Swine flu, or H1N1, is presented by the WHO and in the public media as a huge threat, wrongly as it later emerges. We are in the earliest days of the pandemic. Making people really aware of the seriousness of this problem and not causing panic. They really did give a pretty strong press conference this morning. Madame, Monsieur, bonjour. Dans l'actualité de ce samedi, le risque d'épidémie de grippe porcine, partie du Mexique, qui pourrait s'étendre aux États-Unis. Do you remember swine flu? You were really frightened. The numbers are staggering. Well, first of all, they are estimated by the World Health Organization to affect 2 billion people worldwide with H1N1. Joining us now from Cibola, Texas, Patrick and Robin Henshaw. Their family has been hit hard by this swine flu. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. My administration has taken several precautions to address the challenge posed by the 2009 H1N1 flu virus. Im ersten Jahr sterben in Deutschland 258 Menschen an der Schweinegrippe, weit weniger als bei einer normalen Grippewelle. If you've been diagnosed with probable or presumed 2009 H1N1 or swine flu in recent months, you may be surprised to know this. The odds are you didn't have H1N1 flu. In fact, you probably didn't have flu at all. The WHO is very happy to be taking part in this hearing and thanks the Council of Europe. Why for the WHO then we have heard that frightened the world the with definition scare of didn't turn out the pandemic has been changed. But I've heard no reason why. The WHO saß also here am Abzug dieser ganzen uh, dieser ganzen vorbereiteten Transaktion, dieser vorbereiteten uh, Geschäfte, die zwischen Staaten und uh, den Pharmaunternehmen formuliert worden waren. Diese Verträge waren meist geheim, wurden nicht veröffentlicht, weil die Firmen darauf bestanden. Many countries, including Germany, Italy, France and Great Britain, concluded secret agreements with pharmaceutical companies before the swine flu incident, which obliged them to purchase swine flu vaccinations, but only if the WHO issued a pandemic level 6 alert. The world is now at the start of the 2009 influenza pandemic. Die WHO hat entschieden über äh, Ausgaben im Gesundheitswesen in Höhe von äh, weltweit nach Schätzungen der Analysten 18 Milliarden Dollar. Glaxo, Novartis, Sanofi, alle hatten sich diese Impfstoffe in neuen Produktionsanlagen auch für die Pandemie bereitgestellt. Alle hatten sie Verträge mit Nationalstaaten gemacht und dadurch, dass sie so viel investiert hatten, aber das nicht verkaufen konnten, weil ja keine Pandemie kam. Und die nächste Grippe war auch nicht in Sicht und da haben sie eine gemacht. Swine flu makes considerable profits for the manufacturers of vaccines. In first quarter net profit, citing its swine flu vaccine, Lantis, for the gains. France's largest drug maker said its net profit in the quarter rose to 1.71 billion euros, that's 2.26 billion US dollars, from 1.58 billion euros. I tried to arrange an interview with the person responsible for swine flu at the WHO, Keiji Fukuda. He was often on television at the time, but I get an appointment with the official press spokesman. 11 countries officially reporting 331 cases of influenza A, H1, N1 infection 
with 10 deaths. Were you aware of the contracts between pharmaceutical companies and governments? Well, you have to be aware of this, of course. You have to be aware of everything that's going on. And it is extremely easy to, after the fact, say, well, maybe X should not have done Y and A should not have done B. However, think about the opposite. What would have happened had the influenza killed 50% of the people it infected and there was no vaccine? then you and others would be standing here today getting really mad at us for not having made vaccine a possibility. Now, in terms of an overall assessment of the severity of what we are seeing, it's probably uh, fair to call the situation something like moderate. En el momento del outbreak de, de la H1N1, yo era director del Secretariado de la OMS para la Salud Pública, la Propiedad Intelectual y el, los Medicamentos. Susto y temor no había nadie. Yo, personalmente, no conocí a nadie, a nadie en la OMS que se hubiera hecho vacunar contra la pandemia, incluida la directora general que solo en el mes de eh, enero le preguntaron al grupo de periodistas si se había hecho vacunar, dijo que había estado muy ocupada pero que lo iba a hacer. At the time I am pregnant and I avoid airports, crowds and all forms of travel. Public media exaggerates with words and images the danger resulting from swine flu. que sabemos muy bien, por lo que salió publicado en todos los periódicos del mundo, es que hubo un cambio de, la, de, los, de los criterios y se retiraron las guidelines de la, del, del web de la OMS. Could they have declared the pandemic uh, level six also with the old definition? No, justamente porque uno de los criterios era la severidad de la enfermedad y por severidad se entendía también la mortalidad se incluyera ese criterio eh, dio facilitó el que se declarara la fase más alta de la pandemia. So this is uh, this was removed before uh, 2009, shortly before H1N1. Ich habe Ihnen schon gesagt, wir müssen eigentlich mit der Pharmaindustrie arbeiten, insofern, als Sie eine gute Lösung für Schweinegrippe haben. Ja, ich meine, Oder für das, das, alle Grippe. Ja Ihre Impfdirektorin kommt ja direkt von einem großen französischen Pharmakonzern. Also die Zusammenarbeit zwischen Industrie und Weltgesundheitsorganisation bei Impfstoffen findet ja statt. Of course, we would like to have a vaccine tomorrow. We would have wanted to have it yesterday. In 2009, Ms. Kaini is a member of the WHO Swine Flu Working Group. Previously, she had worked for the French pharmaceutical company Transgene. The press spokesman doesn't allow me to interview her, so I try to approach her directly at a conference. I ask Ms. Kaini why the criteria of severity was deleted from the definition of a pandemic phase. Il y a eu une, toute une série de, de réunions d'experts, etc., pour essayer de, de trouver des, des, des critères objectifs, disons, pour la déclaration d'une pandémie. Euh, la sévérité est toujours difficile, parce que la sévérité, on ne la connaît pas au début. Euh, la sévérité peut varier selon les conditions, selon l'état euh, de, de santé, en fait, des, des, des gens qui sont infectés. Donc c'est pour ça que les, les experts euh, pensaient qu'il était préférable de, de se baser sur des critères objectifs. Et les critères objectifs, c'est est-ce qu'il y a transmission dans la communauté, par exemple, ça peut être démontré, et, et dans combien de pays y a-t-il transmission. 
Vous pensez quoi aujourd'hui du changement de la définition Les schémas comme ça, qui sont totalement automatiques, dans lesquels il n'y a aucune, euh, disons, aucune façon de, de, de reconsidérer, par exemple la sévérité ou d'autres aspects, euh, sont sans doute trop, euh, trop stricts. Et est-ce qu'on va changer ça maintenant Oui, bien sûr, oui. Die Beamten der WHO haben davon ja keine Ahnung. Die sind angewiesen auf Wissenschaftler. Und die Wissenschaftler werden ihnen entsandt von den Ländern und von den Geldgebern der WHO. Und da saßen eben sehr viele, die im Interesse der Pharmaindustrie beraten und entschieden haben. The WHO Working Group on Swine Flu consists of 13 external consultants. Two of them report conflicts of interest. Neil Ferguson declares consultancy fees from GlaxoSmithKline, Baxter and Roche, the manufacturers of the swine flu vaccines and medications. Not a problem for the WHO. In 2007, Albert Osterhaus loses his voting right on the Dutch Health Commission due to his conflicts of interest. He declares to the WHO that he has shares in the pharma company Viroclinics, which is suspected of profiting from swine flu. He also declares that he is the chairman of ESWI, describing it as a group of independent scientists. In fact, it is partly financed by vaccine manufacturers. Because I also did some research about H1N1, could we also uh, discuss this a little bit later? Yeah. I can tell you there's no scientific meeting today organized that is not being sponsored by industry, and rightly so. Yeah, industry is making the vaccines. It's not the national institutes that are making the vaccines any longer. Industry is doing it. I'm very curious. Are you still a WHO consultant? Uh, at, the, at the moment, I'm, uh, I'm working more with the private sector as well, so I st I'm still consulting from time to time. Are you still working with these European scientists against influenza? Yes, I'm the chair of that particular yeah, organization. Okay. Because I saw that you declared this as a conflict of interest? No, no, it's, it, it's not a conflict of interest, but I, I declare also what might be perceived as a conflict of interest. That's a difference. No, but you have to be very careful okay. there. So at least yeah. if you say that, yeah. and of course people can hold it against you, yeah, but at least I can always say, and I've always done that, that you, you are, you, you, at least you show what you do. It was written there, independent group of scientists. Yeah. When I looked on the website, I saw that it's funded by all the vaccine producers. Of no, no, it's not funded by... The, some money comes from, from, uh, from vaccine producers, yeah, but there's money coming from many other sources as well. And that's the same with WHO and, and, and a lot of other organizations. As long as you're transparent and show what you're doing, it's fine, I think. How is the percentage of funding? I don't know exactly, but there is, there is a, a substantial part of the funding comes from elsewhere. From meetings, comes from... Uh, come from European projects, come from, and there is a percentage coming from industry as well, and that's completely transparent. No, it's, it's fine to bring it up again, but for me, it's, it's over. I don't get any hard figures from Mr. Osterhaus afterwards either. Without any facts, without transparency, I can't make any progress here. What about the WHO? Also, meinen Sie, dass wir niemanden von der WHO filmen dürfen oder überhaupt niemanden? We didn't say anything. No, no, I don't think. No, so. but I mean, yeah. yeah, but no, no, I wouldn't like you to use what I just said. But I'm happy to say something else. Okay. Please don't approach people with a camera. We had yeah. issues. Please don't do that. So I asked, but then it's fine. Well, If you ask and you set up the interview, that's yeah. okay. At the country level, I hear good news and I hear bad news about engagement with non-state actors. Bueno, hubo una reunión donde la directora general se reunió con algunos posibles fabricantes de vacunas, donde muchos de los del staff de la OMS eh, fueron excluidos de esa reunión, incluido yo mismo. Yo era director de, de, de un tema específico y estaba eh, en la oficina de la directora general y tenía mi credencial de staff de la OMS. Y yo bajé a la sala del Consejo Ejecutivo y a la persona que estaba en la, en la portería me dijo, no, esto es una reunión privada, confidencial. Yo, que era director de la OMS, staff y a alto nivel y que tenía un tema que tocaba lo que se estaba discutiendo, no pude entrar. 
eso eh, quiere decir que no había la suficiente total transparencia para ver qué era lo que se estaba negociando y qué era lo que estaba en juego. Und das ist dann auch entsprechend bewertet worden vom Europarat und gerücht worden, die Intransparenz, die Rolle der Experten, die dort äh, im Lohn und Brot von der Pharmaindustrie standen. Und äh, ja, dann hat man Änderungen gefordert, aber die WHO hat dann nicht mehr auf den Europarat reagiert. Die ist nur einmal gekommen. Schon bei der zweiten Anhörung ist sie nicht mehr gekommen. Sie müssen ja nicht. Sie sind uns keinerlei Auskunft schuldig. Wir können nicht... Akteneinsicht nehmen, die Akten beschlagnahmen, durchgucken. Geht nicht. Da gibt es keinen, der das kann. Es gibt auch keinen Untersuchungsausschuss, wie es den im Parlament gibt, wo die Abgeordneten hingehen können und sagen, stopp, und die müssen alle kommen und müssen die Akten zeigen. Gibt es auch nicht. Die WHO kann sehr clandestin wurschteln. Ist nicht ausreichend kontrolliert. We found out that there has been a big lack of transparency with the pandemic alert experienced in 2009. What did you do since then to have more transparency concerning the decisions done, concerning the staff, concerning uh, the declarations of conflicts of interest? How do you want to improve this? I want to um, agree with you. There is no replacement of transparency and accountability. And that's the only way to hold people to account. But in order to do that, we must recognize that uh, in this uh, 21st century, no government can provide everything to their people. So you do need to work with the industry, but work in a way that there is no room for conflict of interest. <laughs> In the case of the pharmaceutical industry, it's even more difficult for the WHO to maintain its independence than with the tobacco industry. On the one hand, the WHO is dependent on the pharmaceutical industries for research and medication. But the industry's financial interests mustn't damage the WHO's activities in the area of health. One thing is clear. Today, the pharmaceutical industry is part of the health system, just like the governments that control the WHO. Politik und Industrie, wo geht die Entwicklung heute hin? Ja, wir haben eine Zeit der Deregulierung, das heißt der Auflösung staatlicher Aufgaben, der Privatisierung staatlicher Aufgaben. Und da gibt es eine ganz massive Lobbyarbeit, neue Wachstumsfelder da zu schaffen, wo vorher öffentliche Verantwortung war. Und wenn das erstmal so weit ist, dann sind da keine Beamten mehr, die man bestechen muss, dann darf man damit Geld verdienen. Und das ist die Entwicklung, die wir zurzeit gerade sehen. Ich verstehe es nicht. Ich verstehe es nicht. Sie sind die Bundeskanzlerin der Bankenlobbyisten, der Pharmalobbyisten, der Lobbyisten der privaten Krankenversicherung. Pfizer doesn't need a PR man. They've got the Prime Minister. Secretary Clinton has a number of super PACs. And in the last filing period, reported receiving $15 million from Wall Street. My whole life I've been a businessman. I've contributed to most of them. I've given to Democrats. I've given to Hillary. I've given to, I've given to everybody because that was my job. I got to give to them because when I want something, I get it. When I call, they kiss my ass, okay? It's true. They kiss my ass. Politics are losing power, and that's also reflected in the financing of the WHO. In the 1990s, all countries froze their membership contributions in the wake of the financial crisis. Desperate times do indeed call for desperate measures. 
We are in a mess. The financial crisis hit the world like a sudden jolt, and it hit the world where it hurts the most, money. Today, UN organizations, foundations, NGOs, and industry contribute almost 40% of the WHO's annual budget. The second largest source of finance, right after the USA, is the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. 30 years ago, in starting Microsoft, it, there was, we had a very ambitious vision, a computer for everyone. Now I join you in seeking to achieve an even more important vision, which is good health for every human being. Today, the WHO relies on voluntary contributions like that from the Gates Foundation, but these are often linked to conditions. Bill Gates declares, our priorities are your priorities, not the other way around. A Freudian slip? Our priorities are your priorities. Today, the WHO's annual budget amounts to about $2 billion. Coca-Cola spends twice that much on advertising alone, and the hospitals around Lake Geneva spend $6 billion a year. When it was founded, the WHO could decide how to distribute its funds itself. Now, 70% of its budget is tied to particular projects, countries, or regions. If the WHO receives funding to fight malaria, for example, it can't use that money to combat Ebola. The Ebola Interim Assessment Panel put it in very precise words. At present, WHO does not have the operational capacity or culture to deliver a full emergency public health response. What does the Director General of the WHO think about that? I want to ask her what constraints she is under. I need that. <laughs> Since I can't get to speak to Margaret Chan, I meet one of her close advisors. I think it's simply a wrong perception to think there can be an external independent review. Because then you have to say who is selecting these independent experts and who is controlling their independence and who is controlling the independence of those controlling the independence? There is no external entity as such independent. Of course he's right, but he's wrong. You know, he's, he's mixing everything up because he, this world is as it is, and you have to do what you can to make sure that the independence of the science is as good as possible. It will never, ever be perfect. He's quite right by that. But he should be talking about his own. I mean, he's, he's from Switzerland. He came straight from Switzerland, which is a country that is completely locked into a partnership approach. And he's in charge of partnerships at WHO. So I know Gaudens was very keen that any companies could come in as long as it was transparent, he didn't mind. (laughs) 
this is our opposition to the non-state actors thing as it is. Okay, Namibia will be on side with us, isn't it? African groups generally yeah. are worried about it. How many people are in? Quite a few now. Quite a few. Yeah, quite a few, that's yeah. enough. What's going on with them? Next room. Next room. What's happening there? What's Tell happening me. there you know? is those industrialized countries that would really like to expand their markets into the developing world they are finding a way to let WHO allow these companies in to influence policy. The world in which the WHO operates today is very different from the world in which the organization was established more than 60 years ago. Member states are also influenced by non-state actors. That since they are our bosses and they are sovereign member states, if it's a private sector entity, if it's uh, an NGO or whoever influences them, as long as they make it their national position, it's their national position and we accept it as such. Fukushima statt heute Morgen. In diesem Hotel trifft sich die Gesundheitskommission der Präfektur. Sie präsentiert neue Zahlen über die Veränderungen an den Schilddrüsen bei Kindern. Gut anderthalb Jahre nach der Atomkatastrophe. Den Vorsitz hat Professor Yamashita. Bei mehr als 42 Prozent der Kinder wurden Knoten oder Zysten festgestellt. Nach Tschernobyl lag die Zahl dort zwischen 0,5 und 1 Prozent, gemessen damals von Professor Yamashita. Was uns aber noch viel mehr verwundert, niemand aus der Expertenrunde fragt nach den Ursachen für diesen hohen Wert. Professor Yamashita is contributing to the trivialization of the risks of radioactive contamination in public. Yamashita works together with the WHO in cases of nuclear catastrophe. Is the WHO downplaying the dangers of nuclear radiation? Is it, for example, keeping silent about a rise in thyroid cancer? You have also the film on the nuclear? Very few. Yes, very few. There was a problem with... There is a lot here about swine flu and almost nothing about Fukushima. I would like to talk to the Director General about this in person. Maybe you can help me. How can I get an interview with Margaret Chan? Talk to Tariq. Very difficult. I have to become friends with you. Okay, I see. She's very busy. I know, I know. This is why I'm asking. Can we bring you, can we get you someone else? No. Look, I, no one can promise you interview with, the, with Dr. Chan because she I really know. prefers other to speak. So there are some circumstances where, where she does it, but nothing that can be guaranteed.
It's difficult to find anybody who is allowed to talk. The mayor of Matsumoto, Akira Suginoya, is also a doctor and has founded a convalescence camp for children from contaminated areas. ですから飲ませないとみっていうことの判断で結局は国からは指示が出なかったんですね。要するにインタビューで言ってました。As a result of experience after Chernobyl, the WHO recommendations for issuing iodine were revised in the year 1999 under the supervision of the British scientist Keith Baverstock, a member of staff at the WHO. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, for that kind introduction, and thank you for the invitation to come and present here. I guess I just... OK, I want to start uh, this presentation by saying a few words about uh, lessons learned from a previous nuclear power plant accident, namely the one in Chernobyl in 1986. When I started my program with WHO, within a few weeks, I learned that uh, there was a claim that there was a large number of thyroid cancers in children. And this ended up in a mission to Minsk. Uh, we saw an astonishing number of children who'd been operated for thyroid cancer, quite young children. So to see, as we did on that day, possibly I think it was 11, 12 maybe cases, in one place at one time, all having been operated was really quite extraordinary. We took it from there and with our Belarusian colleagues published two short papers in the journal Nature to draw attention to it. After the papers were published, WHO asked me to withdraw the paper from Nature. Okay. With a paper published with about five or six other people all agreeing on this position. And Kreisel asked me to withdraw that paper from publication after it had been published. Who worked, Kreisler, who worked at WHO? Geneva, Geneva. yes. He threatened me. How He's, did he threaten you? With my career. He said, your career will be shortened if you don't do this. And was it shortened? No. I wonder why in Fukushima area it wasn't distributed. I don't know. I don't know. I should have given them, yes. Okay. Yeah. They don't like to cause panic. Die Gefahren seien unterschätzt worden, stellen die von der Regierung beauftragten Experten fest. Außerdem kritisieren sie das Krisenmanagement nach dem Reaktorunglück. Der Betreiber TEPCO habe versucht, das wahre Ausmaß zu vertuschen. Und auch die Regierung des damaligen Ministerpräsidenten Naoto Kan habe die Öffentlichkeit schlecht informiert. Did you have any contact with WHO after the TEPCO accident? どういう
見てましたので、えー、そういう判断が残念ながらあできませんでしたごく一部ありますが全体としては結果としてその様子剤をあの子どもたちに配ることが、えー、できませんでした、まあ、これも大変あのお、まあ、残念に思っていることの一つ I still find it beyond belief that Naoto Khan was convinced at the time that no radioactivity would emerge after the accident. Just one day after the accident, a monitoring station of the organization CTBTO recorded raised levels of radioactivity 200 kilometers from the nuclear power station. ありましたか。ないと思いますか。震災の時はどこにいたの。と、三で一日の時は福島にいて、うん、その夏休みに。仙台と北海道に行きました。うんうん、あの、三点一一から。あの、夏休みまではずっと福島。はい。うん5ミリぐらいのものがありますね。あの白いね、石灰、石灰化って硬くなっているところがありますね。で、あの福島でいろんな講演会に心配だから何回も行ったんですけれども、どれを聞いても安全だっていう講演会ばっかりで、で、やはりこれはベラルーシに行かなくちゃわからないと思いまして。でこれはベラルーシに行った時にもらってきたスライドでチェルノブイの事故からがんがこんなに毎年毎年今でも増えてる、うん、でこれ見てやはり福島もこれから危ないなっていうのを思ってますちゃんのは電話入ってんの、うん、私のですからあの専門家の中でもすでにもう甲状腺がん増えてるということを強く言ってる人とまだそういう状態までは生きてないという人が両方いる。というのが私の知っている状況です。But who is right? 個人的にはですね、あのそういう危険性、そういうリスクがあるというふうに、あの個人的にはそういうふうにあの心配。今はあのもちろん公的総理という立場ではないから個人的な見解も申し上げましたけど。さっさと入ろ。さっさと入ろ。直ちに入ろ。直ちに入ろ。値段が高くて危ないことはみんな知ってるくせになぜ始めようとするのか既得権益なんですよ原発をなくして再生可能エネルギーに変えていく What do you think today about Aida and intake after nuclear accident? Well again it's more or less what was said in, in, in the video People are not taking iodine as of the moment. The Japanese authorities have not said that that should be done. They have distributed iodine tablets, pre positioned them, but have not yet asked anyone to take them. Taking iodine tablets in the absence of iodine radiation is actually bad for you. You need to match iodine, taking iodine to the exposure. I understand, but. From today's point of view, was the exposure given at that time in most affected areas or not? You know, again, that's almost five years ago, and I can't remember the process from day to day. And certainly, we would have adapted, though, our recommendations based on the information we were getting. But there are these guidelines, and it's written in here you should take iodine within the first six hours after a nuclear accident.、Mm -hmm. That's in here, and it's also clear that it was not given in Fukushima. That's also a fact. I mean, that's something you don't have to look up, it's obvious. Okay. I really think you are wasting your time on this topic. 
and then we should move on to other topics because I only okay. have until 12 o'clock. Is it that you can't say something critical about the Japanese government? I, WHO, work on the basis of facts. And if I don't have the facts and the information at my fingertips, I'm not going to speculate. Yeah. But in general, um, is it possible for WHO to criticize nations? I'm, I'm not going to say anything more about this. Why should I say anything more? No, this was a general question, not in relation to Fukushima. Well, let's move on to another topic. Okay. From, from, from the WHO? Yeah, yeah, the speaker. Well, I know what is the, his role. It's not to answer anything, it's to go around, 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 around. Yeah, yeah. This is the problem. See. One of the serious problems of the WHO is the, the, the policy, the, me, the media policy, because they, they are trying to avoid any, any conflict, to avoid anything, so they are not talking openly and transparently to the people. So uh, what struck me was that your questions are odd and out of date. Wie verwenden Sie das Ganze? C'est quoi? C'est encore un exercice de WHO bashing ou c'est quoi? Je 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 vois pas le l'intérêt maintenant. Non non non, c'est um, pas uh, une autre exemple de WHO bashing. No, it's a great organization. I'm the spokesperson for the organization. I do this day in day out, and it's it's I love the job. Is it getting more difficult for you now that WHO has lost trust? Who says WHO has lost trust? Is that you? Madame Chan, qui nous a reçus, elle a eu cette phrase Vous êtes plus libre que nous. Elle a dit ça. Et à moi, elle m'a dit personnellement, chuchotant à l'oreille, Vous savez, on peut faire beaucoup plus quand on n'est pas payé pour le faire. Elle t'a dit ça Ah oui. Ah oui, 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 certainement. I am Alison Katz. I worked for the World Health Organization myself for 18 years. And um, since I have left, um, I have been involved with Independent WHO, which works in the area of radiation and health. And we have been in front of the World Health Organization headquarters in Geneva for seven years now. And it is a permanent, peaceful protest so that the world understands that somebody is witnessing the victims of radiation, uh, which includes almost everybody. The Japanese people are already talking and they are reporting very, you know, very serious health effects in children that the World Health Organization is ignoring, is not talking about, doesn't mention in its report, you know. At the time of Chernobyl, the people couldn't talk freely. Es handelt sich um das bisher schwerste Unglück in der Geschichte der Atomreaktoren. Der wahrscheinlich am Samstag in Brand geratene Reaktorkern ist offenbar weiter außer Kontrolle. Gefahr für uns in der Bundesrepublik besteht gegenwärtig nicht. The New York Academy of Science book, this one, uh, comes up with an estimate of 985,000 deaths, but that is worldwide, between 1986 and 2004. And of course that makes a dramatic contrast with what the establishment says, which is still around 50 deaths and possibly 4,000 cancers as a, as a final total. The other major omission is that 
the World Health Organization, has never considered anything except cancer as a health effect. Since Chernobyl, we know that there are other diseases. What are the diseases? Unfortunately, um, yeah. For example, um, it's cardiovascular diseases. Infertility, thyroid diseases other than cancer. There's a book, uh, maybe you heard about it, of the Academy of Science. Which was reputed by the New York Academy of Sciences because it's so unsound. But that's not true. Yes. If you read the, Academy, the statement from the New York Academy of Sciences in 2011 or 12, they repudiated the book. Yeah. Uh, let me give you this. <laughs> this is from the Journal of Radiology, oh, and it's a review okay, of the I'm... New York Academy of Sciences book, yeah. which talks about all the flaws in it. Okay, okay. So I should also give you something. A book review by Independent 2. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we read this and then we meet again. Hello, this is Lillian Frank. What does it mean exactly? Uh, did the New York Academy of Science repudiate the Chernobyl book? The editor tells me that the Academy never repudiated the book. He permits me to record the phone call, but later he withdraws his permission. Isn't he able to speak freely either? When I try to confront the WHO press spokesman with his statement, he doesn't take my calls. So he doesn't take it. Okay. Do you want to try with my Italian number? It's like yours. Why not? Thanks. Like mine? Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hi, Gregory. This is Lillian. Good to hear you. The press you. spokesman refuses to give me another interview. I'm good, and you? He says he spent enough time with me already. Perfect. I was wondering whether um, we could meet again for another interview. No, why not? Perhaps the publisher of the Chernobyl book can help me. Good morning. Good morning. The original contact person at the New York Academy of Sciences, you know, agreed to do, publish the book. And then there was a big to-do at the New York Academy, and they did not think it was a good idea. And I suspect that they were pressured by the nuclear industry, but I don't know for sure. How big is the influence of the nuclear industry? Notre parc nucléaire constitue une force, une force économique, une force stratégique considérable pour la France. Nous planifions de construire en Inde 12 atomes d'énergie avec l'utilisation de technologies russes. Here at home, nuclear power is also an important part of our own energy future. Uh, as you know, I'm a big believer in nuclear power. Japon et France, nous devons montrer un niveau de sûreté incontestable qui permettra de maintenir une production d'énergie nucléaire. 
The International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, wants to promote the safe and peaceful use of atomic energy. Nuclear power will remain an important and viable option for many countries as a stable and clean source of energy. The WHO is concerned with health. These are different priorities, but the two organizations are working closely together. For example, together with other UN organizations, they are compiling a report about the health consequences of Chernobyl. Just come back from France. France. This is, this is your place. I, uh... I'm a critic of, you, of WHO, and they tended not to invite critics for their two reports, one on health and one on the environment. What kind of people are these? Do you know some of them? Or? Yes, I know most of them. Um, they're certainly a good bunch, but the trouble is that they are, they're outweighed by the scientists from IAEA. And, um, because they were, they're the ones who ruled the roost, who, who dictated the agenda. The thing was that there would be a whole series of informal meetings going on between WHO and IAEA at uh, quite senior levels, very senior levels. Mm -hmm. And they would um, predetermine what the line they would take. That's why they had a WHO stroke IAEA meeting in Vienna in 2005, in October 2005, to put the line across. This was it, this is what we're going to do. The trouble was that many, many people came opposed to all this. Maria Nira works at the WHO. She is responsible for the risks of radioactive contamination. I deliberately make an appointment to see her in Paris. The press department won't get in the way here. To make sure she agrees to see me, I don't tell her what I want to talk about until we first meet. It's like in Chernobyl. There is a group saying that there have been one million deaths that WHO is hiding. How can you have one million deaths? Come on. Seriously. Yeah, but this is because they look one at the broader... One million deaths? And then the humanity will not... Uh, I mean, one million? This is... Yeah, but this is because they are, were looking at a broader part of the world population. Yeah, but one million deaths. You think you can hide one million deaths? But did, seriously. Yeah, but do you seriously Which think... Which records? You have mortality records. That... How can you seriously believe that Chernobyl accident caused 50 deaths? No, we didn't say that. But it's still on the WHO website. So we wrote the other report, yeah. and the initials are T-O-R-C-H, which is torch. We said right away that we expected mm, somewhere between 30 and 60,000 altogether worldwide future deaths, because the plume from Chernobyl went right round the world, yeah, the Northern Hemisphere. And whilst the concentrations were low, far, far away, it doesn't matter because there were many, many millions of people. There are 600 million people in Europe alone. And they were all affected. Die Spielplätze sind gesperrt. Messungen in Sandkästen ergaben erhöhte Radioaktivität. Und bei Spaziergängen heißt es, bloß nicht den Rasen betreten. Milchbauern wie Alois Meyer wissen nicht, wie sie auf Dauer ihr Vieh füttern sollen. Herr Meyer, wie wird es denn ausschauen, wenn jetzt das Trockenfutter ganz ausgehen würde? Ja, wenn es trocken wird, dann ganz ausgehen und wir dürfen kein Groß nicht fördern, dann gäbe es ja nur die einzige Möglichkeit, das ganze Vieh zu verkaufen. Wie tausendfach im Land schreitet hier am Mittag der Weiblinger Polizeikommissar Hinderer zur Beschlagnahme von einer Tonne Gärtnereispinat. Das heißt, es ist momentan polizeirechtlich beschlagnahmt, bis sie weiteres von uns hören. Die Weltgesundheitsorganisation der Vereinten Nationen sieht ebenfalls keine Gefährdung der Menschen außerhalb der betroffenen Region in der Sowjetunion. Politicians who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it.
the purpose of this report was looking at the exposure and the doses to which people have been exposed, what is the risk that we can expect. And I think this is more human than trying to predict how many people will die from cancer. The other reason why we were not using cancer mortality figures, but rather incidents, is because, as you know, most of the cancers can now be treated, and therefore there will not mortality associated. I don't know whether you have noticed, but our health risk assessment is only with the log of WHO. But I mean, if one third of the experts belong to IAEA... This is kind of anticipating that those experts from IAEA are not... Uh, on the best of their science, which is the case. I don't think they were there to represent hmm, any interest. I mean, it was criticized that there was no oncologist or no radiobiologist, also no scientist who published critical articles on health effect of nuclear energy. But when you need to do a, a scientific report, it's not a question of bringing an activist from the left wing, an activist from the right wing. It's a question of science. What's happened is that there are groups outside that they want to use those as events to say, you see, nuclear energy is, is, is bad, is, is, is dangerous. Why we don't stop the use of the nuclear energy, which is a different cause. Do you think it could also be the other way around, that nuclear industry tries to not to tell the whole truth about the health impacts? Uh... Absolutely. I, mean, I have no doubt, for sure. ここの信号でこっちがないので、そちらに全員渡らなくちゃいけなくって、ここで信号待ちを 1回、2 少しでも高い場所とか、あの、とどまる場所は下げるという風にして少しでも線量を下げようという努力をしています。We are not perfect, but we are there and we are doing the best that we can. And with the support of everybody who recognizes that there is a need for a global public health, very heavy institution, heavy in the good sense, I mean with weight, institution uh, and powerful institution, it will be the best for all of us. And I will fight for that for the rest of my life. I'm a convinced public health officer, and I think my record accredits that uh, if we need to fight, I'm not afraid. Que al mundo industrializado, a los países industrializados, a las grandes potencias, les interesa una agencia de salud, una agencia internacional débil. Sí. Die Weltgesundheitsorganisation ist in Bezug auf ihre Finanzierung in einer sehr äh, fragilen Situation. Die WHO wird wirtschaftlich unter Druck gesetzt, weil viele Staaten da sind, bei denen wirtschaftliche Interessen wichtiger sind als Gesundheitsinteressen, auch wenn sie das Gegenteil behaupten. Und das ist deshalb kriminell, weil Menschen deswegen sterben. A scientist in the United States this past spring made the observation that this generation of children is the first generation in modern history that is not going to be as healthy as their parents. That should not be.
What do I do with this knowledge now? Go out on the streets together with Independent Who? Or just go home again? First, I have to speak to the Director General. I was talking to Margaret Chan for an interview during World Health Assembly. She said, yeah, she would like to give it, but I didn't get uh, any answer so far. I'm just concerned about WHO and its image in the film. It's really, really important that I could talk to Margaret Chan. You know, I'm very flexible. It doesn't have to take a long time. It's not about time. It's about her physically being in the office. Hello, this is Lillian. Do you think we can do the interview tomorrow? Mm, probably not. The queue for demands for her is so long that you'd be waiting another five years. <laughs> Margaret Chan carries on. But I don't know. I mean, she is very patient how to stay there because in my place, I would say goodbye. You are destroying. This is your business. You are privatizing the organization. I'm not going to help her. And probably at one point, she have to realize that she, she's helping and serving the interests of the people giving funding to, to WHO. La dirección de la OMS en el momento en que yo iba, estaba a retirarme, estaba más, más bien contenta. Yo creo que eh, estaban ya cansados de que yo siguiera insistiendo en ciertas políticas y que algunos decían en aquella época, se burlaban, decían, no, cuando Velázquez se vaya de la OMS probablemente van a cambiar muchas cosas. So last summer, an editor from the uh, WHO's official journal, the World Health Bulletin, invited me to write an editorial on the uh, psychological impact of the Fukushima accident on evacuees. And I agreed to do that. It was rejected on the grounds that it contained criticism of uh, WHO and the Japanese authorities. Well, of course, <laughs> It did. <laughs> um, I mean, there were things wrong. I think the editor's words were, the World Health Bulletin will not be a platform for such criticism, no matter how valid. So will it this year, will you go to uh, the World Health Assembly, to the UN building? No, I'm still not allowed in. Why? Because apparently I've asked too many disobliging questions. They won't renew my accreditation. I have annoyed people. And I have written about things they don't want me to write about. Why did you stop working at WHO? I was fired. I was a staff association representative, and we organized the first, um, it, well, it wasn't even a strike, it was a go slow in 2005. And it was to protest against the levels of corruption in WHO, nepotism, mainly nepotism, corruption. And of course, they were absolutely horrified. So it was a huge success. But three weeks after that, my, my post was abolished. Right, um, it's over to you, folks. Who'd like to uh, start the round of questions? Thank you. Is it on? 
Do you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Lillian Frank, Oval Media. It's a question to Dr. Chan. We Do just learned that area refugee health, AMR, and climate change are huge global health challenges. But I'm asking myself, how can we meet them if WHO is constantly losing power? Important donor nations, they want a weak WHO. One could even compare WHO to Titanic, I would say. So um, isn't it your responsibility, Dr. Chan, to step down before the end of your second term in order to signal to the world that your organization, your ship, is sinking? You ask an excellent question. If I tell you, WHO as an organization, only 30% of my budget is predictable funds. Other 70% I have to take ahead and go around the world to beg for money. And when they give us the money, they are highly linked to their preferences, what they like. It may not be the priority of WHO. So if we do not solve this, you know, we are not going to, as, uh, to be as quick as we were.